Hey, what's going on guys? It is back, or not it, I am back. Another new video, I got some battery for my camera, which I can finally start filming with it, which is awesome. And I uh, got some more parts came in for the Miata. Um, let's jump right into it. All right, so first thing on the list is I got uh, replacement axles. So I picked up two uh, from my buddy Matt, who works at Redline um, in Orlando, and uh, they part out uh, Miatas and other cars, I think, too, as well. And as you guys remember, I messed up this one. Ignore my messy, messy workmanship. Uh, so yeah, so now I have a replacement one. Uh, this one definitely has a lot of surface rust on it, but it's okay. It's just temporarily until I um, blow an axle or break my rear end and then I will uh, upgrade. So yeah, so I got new axles, which is awesome. And as you can see right here is my beautiful new drive shaft. So putting it side by side compared to uh, the OEM one, uh, it's a lot beefier. <laughs> so I'm not sure what diameter this one is, but I think this one's like two and a quarter maybe. We can easily measure it real quick for you guys. But yeah, it's um, it's pretty beefy. I mean, just take a look at the size of the uh, uh, yoke joints right there. So the transmission slides and slides into the transmission right here. This one's got a little surface rust on it because I left it in the back of my truck bed for like a week. But yeah, it's it's pretty solid. I'm pretty stoked on it. So all new flanges, new everything, complete custom drive shaft built by um, Advanced Driveline in, in Orlando. So pretty stoked on it. It came out uh, pretty beefy. So I'm gonna throw it in the car today. See how it fits. All right, so I just wanted to quickly measure the diameter difference between the two drive shafts, uh, just to see, because I know this one, the new one's significantly bigger. Uh, the OEM Mazda one is about two inch diameter drive shaft. And now we'll take a look at the new beefy one made by um, Advanced Drive One here in Orlando. And we are looking at three inch, three inch diameter. So three inch versus two inch, you can definitely tell the difference by a size and feel and weight. Uh, it is very nicely made, all solid one piece, just like the OEM one, and all welded up. I don't know if you can tell, looks like nice MIG welds. And uh, Advanced Driveline made this for me in three days. I gave them my measurements, I told them the flanges I needed, what it was going to, and um, yeah, they made this in three days, and it was 300 bucks. And I knew I needed a custom drive shaft made on the swap, and I'm glad I went with them instead of drive shaft shop, because only reason why I did not go drive shaft shop, drive shaft, is because of shipping, and this was right down the street from my work. So yeah, we're gonna go throw this in the car, um, and I'll throw the axles in the car, and then we will figure out how we're gonna mount the diff, because I am deleting the power plant frame brace that goes from the transmission to the diff. Uh, since I am, can't use it with the Turbo 2 transmission, and I'm going to show you guys how I plan on mounting it. I have an idea, and I know people are asking about it in the last video, so I'm going to address that hopefully today. So let's get started and get underneath the car and uh, throw this stuff in. Anytime I'm about to start working on the car and it's not close by, I just grab like a handful of tools. A bunch of miscellaneous wrenches and sockets I know I'm going to need. So the first thing I'm going to do is put the new axle in the car, and it uh, should be fairly easy. The only showing goes in one way, and it is going in this way. After a little bit of wrenching, the axle is in. That is the one that came with my car when I bought it. Um, not from this car, my car is a 93, but this is a 1.8 LSD swap uh, someone did before me. And that is the new axle I just put in over there. So the dip's all back together and uh, all that's good to go. And those BC coilovers though, so happy I got those BCs on. And then uh, here's a here, interesting, I'll show you guys this. This is my uh, meth injection uh, from the back of my trunk. This is where the, uh, the meth comes out of the uh, pump and comes through this little grommet right here in the floor. And I have it running down uh, underneath the car. I don't think I've ever showed you guys that. But okay, so anyway, diff's in. This is the RX-7 diff housing. Uh, axles are in. All I need to do now is put the drive shaft in. As you can see, it is missing. 
and uh, we're about to do that right now. In case anyone's wondering, the axle nut on the back of my Miata is a 32 millimeter. Uh, it's a it's a big socket. <laughs> I actually did not have a 32 millimeter socket, so I actually went to Harbor Freight and got this nifty little kit. Uh, it's from 26 to 38. Um, it's actually I got it in half inch drive. I wish I would have got it in three eighths. Um, but yeah, worked out pretty good. So yeah, I zipped my axles on and off with my uh, gun. And uh, I just replaced it. This one looks pretty damaged. Uh, the new axles, the replacement axles, I should say, came with a new nut. So, yep. Okay, so now I'm going to put the drive shaft in the car. Okay, so now we're looking over to where the drive shaft meets the um, differential. And as you see, it's there's no bolts in, but it's sitting in there very well. Uh, they put it, the new flange they use has a nice little, like, um, not recessed, but I guess we would say opposite of recessed hole that fits well inside the recessed hole of the diff. So right now we're in pretty solid. And then right now I'm trying to figure out what uh, size bolts I need to use and uh, length bolts I need to get for the new uh, drive shaft bolts since I don't have the ones I used and the ones I had before were really crappy. So I'm just trying to get an idea of um, diameter thickness or, or different types of bolts. And when you do drive shaft bolts, you want to have them so that there is threads, obviously where you uh, thread the nut onto, but no threads where the bolt goes through the drive shaft in the diff. So as you can see, I have a little ruler and I measured the thickness of the drive shaft flange and the flange on the diff. It's about half an inch. This bolt has about a uh, half an inch of flat surface where there's no threads. And right, you see there, right there, it is perfect. So this is perfect diameter bolt. This is perfect uh, length of no threads. And then right here, I can thread a new nut on and uh, tighten this up. So clearly, I'm not going to use this bolt. This is an Allen key. This is just, you know, this is just for um, measurements. And I can go to Ace Hardware later and get some grade A bolts. But I will pick those up tomorrow, and then I'll be able to bolt up the diff. But for now, that will sit there like this. I'll put this bolt here to hold this one on. And uh, yeah, we are in business. I think my car is in uh, neutral. I mean, I'm in gear, maybe the transmission. But oh man, I am so stoked to finally see this car come together. We are looking pretty stout. Oh baby, we are coming together. We have axles in, we have a diff in, we have a drive shaft in, we have a turbo two transmission down there. Man, eight months, it only took me to get this far, but not too bad. The car should be driving soon, hopefully. I say that, but you know, <laughs> you know how it goes. Oh yeah, that's the money shot right there. Man, Turbo 2 tranny and the diff, the full powertrain is assembled. Minus a clutch. So, uh, two more things I want to talk about in this video. I guess two and a half. Uh, one, I uh, just recently put some oil in each of the cylinders, which was... Uh, Something I should have done a long time ago because this car has been sitting for eight months and I'm sure those cylinders are starting to get a little rusty. Uh, I wish I did it sooner, but I did it now, so it is what it is. And cylinder number one uh, had a little bit of oil actually on the threads when I pulled it out, the spark plug out. And I think it's because of my valve cover gasket because I highly doubt oil was going up through the threads. It's more likely it went down. So I need to pull the valve cover off and probably replace that gasket. So someone remind me to do that. But anyway, the main, the other thing I was talking about is my downpipe. So I started cutting this up the last video and um, I'm gonna show you guys how far I made it since then. Okay, so on the last video, you guys saw me cutting up the downpipe and I stopped there because I want to show you guys kind of the progress. Um, I made a cut this just to be like that this was here and then this was here that was more or less my downpipe situation that's how i ran it and it worked fine um the new downpipe location needs to be adjusted because of the transmission and because i fixed the back shelf inside the car so i cut a much steeper angle and now it drops down significantly faster so i have this set so it's perfect i haven't marked but essentially that will be my new downpipe. So it will drop off very quickly and still have plenty of room to, um, kind of hard to see, but exhaust should easily go straight back and down. So that is gonna be the new um, downpipe as it is. And I'll show you when we go test fit in the car, I'm gonna show you what it looks like uh, before I weld it all up. 
Okay, so this is what the downpipe is going to look like, more or less, once it's welded up. Uh, it will go straight down and bolt up like so. And as you can see, it clears the back shelf for just a little bit of wiggle room. And uh, yeah, it should go straight down. So that is how I'm fabbing up my downpipe. So yeah, that's basically how I'm making my downpipe. It's not very hard to do. I'm just cutting, measuring, test fitting, welding, and uh, it's very, very easy. I'm not gonna weld anything tonight just because I, I gotta set up the welder and I wanna make sure I fully lay out the whole downpipe uh, in pieces before I actually weld anything up. So that means cutting, tacking, test fitting, pulling back out, checking it, trying again. It takes a few tries, but it's not very hard to do. Anyone that can weld can easily make this. It's not challenging. Um, I'm not a very good welder at all, but with a little 110 MIG welder I have, I can kind of make my own exhaust. Um, but yeah, so that covers the exhaust. I will probably address it later in the video or when I finish it But what I want to do in the rest of this video is quickly talk about how I plan on mounting the Differential into the Miata without the PPF because I know people ask me about that So I have no idea where I put my PPF the power plant frame that goes underneath the car It's somewhere in this garage or the back garage. I have no idea. I have car parts spread everywhere throughout the garage but I have a picture online that I found that I'm going to show you guys. I'll put up on the screen now. Uh, basically, what someone did online is they cut the PPF at the end where it bolts to the diff. And that way, you can start building off that. It gives you a platform to build off. It has the holes pre-drilled, and it's the shape of the Miata diff. And then from there, you can weld on tabs or bolt uh, tabs to it, which I believe I will have to... I don't know if I, I probably can't weld it. I'm pretty sure it's cast aluminum. It's not steel. So I might not be able to make to it. I probably have to TIG weld it. And I don't have my TIG welder to sold it. So I will figure that out when I get there. But that's how I plan on making my uh, diff mount and diff brace. Since when you delete the PPF, you have to have something to hold the diff up. Also, it obviously won't work. And I know a company out there makes a diff mount. I can't remember who it is. I can't remember it's Fab9 or someone. Someone makes a diff mount. I'll link it below if I can remember. It's like 300 bucks. It's kind of expensive. Uh, so that could always be a secondary backup route. Someone can go if your money's no option. But I'm going to try to be resourceful and make my own mount. I just don't want to make it too rigid so it kind of fails when it's uh, under load. Uh, I, don't want, I want to make sure it's like kind of flexible. It can move a little bit. But that is my process. I will cross that bridge when I get there. Uh, just a quick little video tonight, throwing the axles in, the drive shaft in, making some progress, trying to make some more videos, trying to get some more content, and try to get my Miata back on the road. All right, so I clearly didn't finish the video. This is where I stopped. Um, I did look into the PPF. It is not steel. I believe it is cast aluminum, so I cannot weld to it. Anyway, that's how I plan on making the, the mount. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. But um, I figured I'd wrap up this video and show you guys one of my guns I've been collecting and building. And this is my custom Glock 19 uh, cleared uh, Gen 3. It has a agency trigger, a Trigicon RMR red dot optic, as you can see right there. Uh, blacklist threaded barrel, um, all black rear front fiber optic sight, which I need to get suppressor height sights. Uh, custom Cerakoted and um, cut slide all the way around with windows on it and then a uh, custom stipple job on the frame and SOR ma uh, mag plate or base plate and uh, yeah I absolutely love this gun so much it's like my baby and I'm six months in on my nine month wait for my suppressor so I would love um, to show you guys maybe some more gun videos maybe if anyone's interested in firearms because it's been my recent hobby I've been in a lot of shooting matches recently um, but yeah, I got a bunch of cool guns I would love to show you guys. Anyone's interested, let me know. I will gladly make some content on that. But I will see you guys on the next one. I'm going to post this video, and I am down on two weeks in a row making videos. Not too bad. Alright, later guys.